brought to you by Lean Body, the number one protein shake in gyms across America. At the end of the day, you have to break your ass and you have to have discipline. That feels like 1985, let's go. To be a great bodybuilder, you have to be patient. What ends up happening, these kids, they wanna take shortcuts. Hey guys, Lee Labrada here at the Labrada Gym in Houston, Texas. I'm with my old Olympia training partner, Craig the Surf. Welcome. Yes, and we are going to be doing some leg work today. We're gonna to start with quads, and then we're gonna to go to hamstrings and calves. Follow us. You know, I, I can't emphasize enough the importance of the warm up. You know, a lot of times people are in a rush and they don't do that properly. And, you know, the fact of the matter is that getting blood into the muscle is going to make the muscle tissue more elastic. It's going to help to warm up the tendons and make them more elastic and it's going to make you less prone to injury. So a little bit of a uh, little bit of a warm up, getting blood in there and then uh, some stretching and we'll be ready to get into the meat of the program here. And any noise you hear from the left side of the surf body, it's the artificial knee. Oh, shit. <laughs> Craig, uh, all kidding aside, Craig is working out today with a knee replacement. That's a souvenir from our younger days in the gym when we were training for the Mr. Olympia. He was a much heavier squatter than I was. But I can tell you that any guys that are out there that had knee replacement, it's, it's probably the best thing you can do, man. It was yeah. great, it's been great. Yeah, it's been really good, right? Oh yeah, I've squatted up to 185 pounds. That's awesome. Yeah, but I do the 135 steady like you've suggested. Yep, Three, yep. Four, high, six, high, high, high rep, right? Nine, 10, to, 10 to 12 reps, 135, but I've done 185 when my son's trying to... When he's trying to show you up? He kind of, thinks he's the big bull. You know, I hated training legs when I first started bodybuilding. And I think it's because I'd get sick. Every time after training legs, I would go get sick, right? You know, but what happens is after a while, you acclimate, you stop getting sick, and uh, you actually start looking forward to the exertion. I know that I did. And then it got to the point where training legs was just like training back or chest or arms or anything else. It's just, I enjoyed it just as much as everything else, you know? Back in the day, I used to train legs twice a week. You know, worked out to about, uh, it worked out to about three leg workouts every 14 days because I had a system where, uh, you know, where we would uh, basically, you know, circulate through three different workouts. Uh, so it would, it would work out to three leg workouts every 14 days. That was back when I was building. Today, now, it's more of a maintenance workout for me, more for my health. And so I train legs one time per week. What I'm trying to do here is, you know, as, as much as possible, you know, I want the knee to travel over the foot. You know, that's important, you know, to keep the joint aligned with, uh, with the toe of the corresponding foot. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep the knee not, not, not so much going forward. I'm trying to keep it uh, basically as perpendicular as I can and then just dropping my butt, you know, and it throws more of the emphasis on the, uh, on the glute. I used to think your upper body was pretty vascular. Hey, you want to get vascular? Just eat a pizza the night before. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, hold off on that one a quick second. The uh, the chair is here just for balance. It's you know he's really not helping himself up with it much. It's just a just a balance and uh, you know just a just in case when you're in that precarious position there, you don't want to end up on the floor. You know again the idea here is to get some blood into that muscle. You know, as I mentioned before, you get a lot of uh, direct quadriceps work, but you also get some glute work out of this. You know, just, uh, and if you lean forward, lean your torso forward a little bit, you'll f really feel it in your glutes. So do you do these before all your leg workouts, Lee? Yeah, I typically start with body weight uh, squats, which obviously with the body weight squats, you're incorporating both legs. Okay, and then, uh, what I call more of an isolation exercise or, or unilateral uh, leg exercise, you know, one leg at a time, which is this, uh, this uh, one-legged squat. Do 
This exercise looks deceptively easy, but I will tell you that even with your body weight, because again, you're doing it one leg at a time, you know, and it's, uh, if, you, if you're using that slow form, it's like, a, it's like the equivalent of a concentrated movement for the, for the quads. I think the last time I did a leg press was <laughs> our probably last workout in the 90s. Holy smoke. That far? That long ago? Oh, I haven't been on a leg press machine. Remember that time that we went into the gym and we got there and they said, hey, we close in 15 minutes. We had to do a leg training session. They said, we close in 15 minutes. And Craig goes, that's all we need. Uh, we got onto the leg press and we basically did as many sets of leg presses as we could in those 15 minutes. And it was just, it was just crazy. After a quick warm up, we loaded the plates up and we just went to failure about half a dozen times and uh, just down one, down one correct right there. Yep. And uh, man, we literally crawled out of the place, which just goes to show you, you know, even when you're on limited time, you can get a great workout. It doesn't take long. And in fact, sometimes when you set a time frame, uh, you know, a deadline to do it, and like I got to finish it in 15 minutes, or I got to finish in 20 minutes, you're a lot more focused, yeah. you know? So, uh, hey, less talking, more working out, right? Oh, how was that? How'd that feel? Good. All right, do another one. Right. But I don't think we're in any danger of doing the Hunter Labrada sets. <laughs> Not gonna happen. 22 plates per size, or yeah, 12, 11 plates. And throw a body up on top yeah. going, go, go, go! Yeah, I actually had my granddaughter up here the other day. Yeah, she thought it was pretty funny. All right, Craig, let's go. Dude still has some mass on those things. Holy smokes. Watch for white lightning. <laughs> Here comes the white lightning, huh? Holy smokes. I think when Lee and I started training, that was one thing he had taught me, emphasized on me, was the balance of the upper body and the lower body. Because uh, as you know, a lot of guys neglect a lot of their lower bodies. Yeah, a, lot of guys, a, lot, a lot of guys work out whatever grows the fastest. Yeah. You know, because they start getting compliments from their friends at the gym. Oh man, look at the yeah. size of your arms, or look at the size of your legs, or your back, or whatever. And then they neglect the fact that you have to have balance. Oh yeah. We get striation. Come on, Lee. Easy, awesome. Great. <laughs> All right, there it is. Here we go. Whoa! I got it. A little slower on the way down, Craig. Come on. There you go. Good. Yeah. Good. Go. One more. Up you go. Right. Good. There it is. I felt that one. Man. That one, I felt that one. Did you feel it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You look amazing, man. You, you know, that was uh, goal of yours there for a few years to get oh, below shit. 200. Well, last what, do you, what do you think was the biggest uh, influence? These video sessions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it for you every time, right? <laughs> That's funny, man. Let's do some leg extensions. But we literally, without fighting, I would say politely argue who was driving on leg day. There were certain cars, like, like the truck that he used to drive back in the day, that had a clutch. Most of you young guys don't even know what a clutch is anymore, but uh, tr uh, pushing that clutch in to change gears it, it, on leg day, that was interesting. It was like, it was like awesome, Lee. That feels like 1985, let's go. I'm telling you, man, that's the way that our brains are still wired in it. Yeah. 
Unbelievable, that looks unbelievable. Dude, you were blowing me away how, man, that, that knee is like perfect. It is. It is perfect. It is. Yeah. I've had friends that have had them done, have had issues with them, but yours is perfect, man. I thought originally, I'm thinking, man, this is a mistake, because it hurt like hell. It hurt like hell. But you're glad you did it now. Yeah. So you recommend that anybody I sitting on the fence. All right, any of you guys that are sitting on the fence, your knee's worn out, you're thinking about any replacement, there you go. Yeah. Straight, straight from the champ's mouth. Yeah, and that's been almost five years now. Do you know how big are you? Like, are your bigs? No, I don't, I don't even, I don't think I've even measured them. I don't even think they're as big as one of Hunter's arms. It's like, like in pictures, it's like, okay, you stand back here. He's always saying, he's always saying that I'm out angling him. All right, let's go, come on. Let's go. Good, Craig. Yeah, buddy. Good deal. I'm gonna throw a little bit more on. Come on. Let's go. Take what it takes. Take what it takes. One more. Come on. Okay. I felt that one. Thank you, man. All right, next up is hack squats. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be fully transparent with you guys because I think that it's a learning lesson um, in not pushing something uh, where you can set yourself up for an injury. So when I came in here today, you know, I have my, uh, my right hip flexor slightly tweaked and that's why I'm not doing these hack squats today. So I wanted to be fully transparent with you guys and just use that to emphasize the point that if something is bothering you, work around it, pick another exercise. That's really important whether you're training the legs, whether you're training your back, your chest, whatever it is. If a certain exercise hurts you or you have a tweaked muscle, work around it or avoid it because you wanna live to fight another day, right? All right, let's go. All right, Craig, here we go. Good. Excellent. Two. Good, come on, let's go. Drive, one more. Up you go, up. Good, nice job, man. The, the big mass building movements for the legs are the compound exercises. Those are the exercises that include motion at more than one joint. So let's think about that for a quick second. If you're doing a, if you're doing a squat and you've, you're back loaded, you know, your back is loaded with a squat and you come down, there's motion here at the knee and there's motion here at the hip, right? There's, there's movement at both of those, okay? That's a compound movement. Leg press is another one. With a leg press, when you're in the leg press, you're coming down, and as you come down, there's motion at the knee, there's motion, there's pivoting at the hip as well. So there's motion around two joints. That's a compound exercise. When you're doing a leg extension, on the other hand, you're basically locked in on the hip, and all of the motion is on the knee. That's not a compound exercise. So the big, heavy movements like the squat and the leg press, and even heavy uh, heavy hack squats like Craig was just doing, those are the exercises that are gonna put size on your legs the most. Now, I'm gonna remind you guys, especially if you're a little bit older like I am, if you're a mature lifter, okay, the idea is to stimulate, not annihilate. Okay, so the idea on this one, you know, is, is as much as possible to try to use your hamstrings and not a lot of cheating and swinging. There's gonna come a point where your hamstrings are gonna get tired. You can use a little body English, but don't be excessive with it. I've seen guys that would load these things up with too much weight and they end up just basically just swinging 
not a good idea. You want to make sure that the tension stays on the hamstring. The important thing here is to make sure that your hip joint is uh, uh, in front of the edge of the pad. The reason for that is that you want to make sure that you're keeping your back fairly locked and that you're pivoting at the hip to throw the emphasis of the exercise on the hamstrings. Watch. Yeah, pull from, pull from the hams, there you go. Try to arch your back a little bit. There you go, there you go. And then just pull from here. That's it, that's perfect, dude. So typically, whenever I do the hyperextension, it is on leg day. If I'm, if I'm hitting the hamstring on leg day, some, sometimes people split them up. I'll do the hyperextension in the form which I just showed you with the joint in front of the pad. If I do them on back day, because I've been known to do them on back day as well, what I'll do is I'll elevate this bench, and then what I'm trying to do here is making sure that my hip is about parallel with this guy. In fact, it could go even one higher. So we'll go about right there, okay. And so by keeping the hip joint behind the edge of the bench, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that all of that flexion is in my spine itself. I'm gonna lock my hips, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically do what looks like a reverse curl. Mm -hmm. yeah, I see that. Yeah. And that's for my back, that's for my spinal erectors. Okay, so that motion, it's gonna work your spinal erectors more. This motion, which is what we're doing for hamstrings, now I'm unlocking these and the motion is right here, see? That throws more of the emphasis on my hamstrings. That's the difference. All right, Craig, let's go. Good, man. Looking good, bro. Good deal. Guess, guess what? Well, I didn't know that. Were well, you just coached there. Is, that, is that it? You probably knew it intuitively. Long time ago. All right, one more on here, and then we're on to uh, some calves. Calves is where Craig always used to show me up. We've talked about it a zillion times. We're both at a great places in our life right now, but I would not trade those seven, eight years for nothing, man. It was, it was awesome. Those were, those were pretty amazing yeah, times. Man, was... Yeah, we lived through the uh, golden era of bodybuilding. Oh, yeah. Out there in uh, Venice and Santa Monica. Craig and I had the opportunity to work out at the original Golds and at the original World Gym in Santa Monica. And some of those machines in there were some of the original machines that you'll see on the iconic documentary Pumping Iron. Uh, you know, especially like that uh, low, low pull lap, lap machine oh, yeah. that uh, you see Arnold doing in Pumping Iron. That was a machine that Craig and I were, were privileged enough to work out on. Yeah. You know, we used to walk into the gym every day and Joe Gold was there, Eddie Giuliani. Sabo Arnold, and Lou, Arnold, Lou, the whole crew. It was, uh, it was a really, uh, really amazing time. Yeah, we go it's in, a lot of fun. Yeah, we go into Gold's Gym the first time, Lee and I, and I'm looking around going, who's that guy? He goes, oh, that was Mr. California last year. Well, then who's that guy over there? Well, that's Mr. California from the two years ago. Everybody was a sunbeam I'm going, Everybody was Texas back. doesn't seem that big after all. Right, right. Everybody but, was a yeah, champ. They, 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 back, back in the day, correct. especially, you know, because uh, yeah. that was the Mecca. Oh, yeah. You know, now, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit more far flung these days. You have people training all over, you know, but back in the day, you, you, that's uh, where you, you, that's you, where you wanted to be. He went to Los Angeles and Weeder headquarters was in Woodland Hills and, oh, yeah. you know, Venice, Santa Monica for the uh, Gold's Gym and the World Gym, it was a, it was a, uh, a community. Yeah. I mean, Gold's Gym, was, uh, Gold's Gym was what Gold's Gym was, but me personally, I, I liked the, the atmosphere around World's Gym. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was quiet. There was, a, yeah. uh, there was a, a stark difference because uh, uh, they didn't really play loud music in World Gym. 
you know, and in Gold's, uh, you know, the energy was palpable. They oh, had yeah. the, the loud rock music. Yeah. You know, so it just depended on the mood for the day, right? Yeah. All right, do some calves? Calves. All right. All right, so the seated, seated um, calf raise, what it does is it's a movement for the soleus, which are the calf muscles that lie underneath the gastrocnemius. And uh, in this position, in the seated position, you inactivate the uh, larger gastrocnemius, which is what you see from the back, you know, of the, of, of the calf. And it helps to uh, train the soleus and all of the other sundry muscles that you'll find there in the, uh, in the calf. All right. Woo, man, I felt that one. That was good. All right, Craig, here we go. Oh, this is smooth too late. Yeah, it's good, right? Dude, I'm like hyper amazed at how, how beautiful your knee turned out. Yeah. Holy man. smokes, it's like, it's like nothing, it's like brand new. So you never entertained any idea of doing one more time? No, we got Hunter doing one more time for me. We've had a good run. Oh yeah. Now it's about staying in shape and looking the best that I can look at this age, whatever that age is, and then being healthy. You know, it shifts from uh, trying to be as big as you can and competition to longevity, strength, and health. You know, what's really interesting is that back in the old days, you know, the bodybuilders of the 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, it was, it was pretty much equally about strength and health as it was about building a physique. And you know, that whole era has kind of been lost. It's kind of been lost on, on today's bodybuilders, you know, that oftentimes take unnecessary risks with their health. Everybody is in a hurry these days, you know, and patience is a virtue that's often overlooked, but to be a great bodybuilder, you have to be patient. You know, as you and I already know, you have to put in your time. Muscle but, yeah, but what, ha what ends up happening to these kids, they want to take shortcuts. We know about the use of anabolic steroids in our sport, okay? It's a, it's a given, okay? That there's going to be usage, especially if you're competing, acknowledged, okay? Just to be completely transparent. But the issue is when these kids take enormous amounts of these things and end up not using but abusing and abusing their body, you know, and it's like running a car at 90 miles an hour in second gear, yeah. something's gonna give out sooner yeah. or later. You know, so my philosophy always was there's life after bodybuilding. Oh yeah. You know, it's the same thing that I tell Hunter and, and he's on board with that. We know that there's life after bodybuilding. You know, that's why now in my 60s, you know, I don't have any major issues going, right. going on, you know? Yeah, everybody, everybody wants to work four days a week, yeah. have the nice cars, you know, and the big house and all that, and not, yeah. not, not working yeah. towards it. Yeah, at the end of the day, you have to break your ass, yeah. and you have to have discipline. You know, you have to be able to do it uh, day in and day out. And you know, that's one of the things that bodybuilding teaches you, and one of the things that I learned, you know, over the years about bodybuilding is that it teaches you to do hard things repetitively day after day. It takes discipline to be a good bodybuilder, and that's something that can be applied in business or in other areas of your life. Yeah, like Nick Saban said in that one video, it takes what it takes. It takes what it takes, right? It takes what it takes. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you, I would say you for sure, and I was along for the ride, you know, we never, I, I can tell you, we never took that for granted. No, no, we didn't. Yeah. And it takes what it takes, you know, we're, we're the product of discipline, you know, and, uh, and I would even say delayed gratification. And why do I say delayed gratification? Because, you know, all too often, and I used to see it back in the day as well with some of my cohorts, you know, they weren't willing to pay the price, you know, getting in bed to make sure they got eight hours of sleep every night instead of going out and partying, you know, making sure that they ate six meals a day and, and enough protein. It takes discipline to do that stuff. You know, there's always distractions, but you gotta set those things aside, you know, so that's where the delayed gratification comes in. You know, for those of you that are looking to bring up your calves, you know, and I think this goes for weak body parts in general. Anytime you have a weak body part, train it early in your, in your routine while you still have energy and focus. Don't leave it for the very end. I think that the reason, one of the reasons anyway, that guys have average or mediocre calves 
is because they train them at the end of their leg routine when they have very little energy left. That combined with poor calf genetics, because it's, it's difficult to have good calves. You gotta start with good genetics, obviously, but then you gotta put in the work. You know, and if you're gonna put in the work, put in the work at the beginning of the workout while you're still fresh. So standing leg raise, what we're doing here is we're keeping the knee fairly locked, not completely locked, but fairly locked compared to that guy, which is the seated, where we had the knee at a 90 degree angle. Here, the, we're trying to get as close to 180 as possible. And what that does is it in, not inactivates, but it minimizes the involvement of the soleus and throws more of the stress on the gastrocnemius, which is the larger part that you can see from the back. Can, can you imagine if, just for shits and grins, if he dieted for three weeks? <laughs> like, I mean, like, went into it like a normal, what you'd... Do you know what your body fat is? Are you trying is? to talk me into a master's? No. <laughs> What's your body fat? Do you know your body fat You're, right you're, you're going to piss off all the fans that are going to be egging me on to do a master's. Yeah. My body weight now is about 170 pounds. Yeah. How about body fat percentage? Man, I don't know. It's too low. I can't count that low on my fingers. I'm, I'm, I'm balancing you off the other end. Now nah, you're looking pretty lean there to surf. All right, here we go. Good, good, good. Good strength, Craig. Good strength. I'm starting to feel it right now. You're starting to feel it? Oh yeah. That adrenaline kicking in? No, no. Oh, watch out, here comes the Texas Twister. <laughs> the Texas Twisters. The first day we walk into World's Gym, I'm sitting there and there's freaking Arnold Schwarzenegger with Joe Golden. Lee sitting there and He's got that stogie, and he, he goes, hello, Lee, blah, blah, congratulations, and blah, blah. Who's this? Oh, that's my training partner, Craig DeSurf, and all. he goes, you from now on, you are the Texas Twisters, and it's stuck. Awesome. Amazing. Couple more, there's one, one more, come on. Drive, good. Awesome, man. And that is our leg workout for today. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you'll join us next time as we do more workouts. If you like this video, please press the subscribe button now and forward it to one other person. That's how we get the word out and we can keep doing these awesome videos and you guys can uh, keep working out alongside us. So have an awesome, awesome day.